everybody, um, whoever we have joining with us. My name is Karishma and I will be with you today um, facilitating this short workshop on driving DEI for nonprofit boards. Um, I will take this opportunity to welcome you all to this session and welcome you to um, just this last final day of the summit where we talk about DEI in general, its significance for social justice work, for social aid impact sector work. Um, and to to this this collective effort that we're making towards ensuring that um, <clears throat> justice is at the core of what we do not just outside, right? Not just externally, but also internally within the sector. Um, and with that in mind, I think let us jump right into it. Yes, do we want to go on to the next slide, please? Superb. Um, so for anyone who may be joining us, I do want to give us a second to perhaps share in chat with us if you have a bit of a semblance of your personal weather report. Your personal weather report could just be, you know, I'm feeling a little sunny today or I'm feeling a little down, so it's cloudy, um, or I'm excited, but I'm a little reserved, and so maybe it could be partially sunny. Um, based on that, please feel free to share your personal weather report with us in chat, and I can read them out alongside. If you have any ideas or any suggestions that you'd like to make, um, towards the outcomes of the session or what you're expecting from it, please feel free to share that with us as well during check-in. I will give it about a minute for folks um, to share with us, say hello, um, introduce yourselves, perhaps take a minute and get to know the space a little bit. Yeah, I will wait for chat to start pouring in. In the meantime, just also want to share that if there are thoughts, ideas that you have, um, even during the session, please feel free to share them in chat and I will keep an eye out. Um, and of, of course, we will wait for you to share your weather report or share any ideas that you have even throughout the session after we move on. I think with that in mind, Yash, let's move to the next slide, please. All right, super. Um, so just a second, perhaps, to introduce um, the organization that I'm from and myself. Um, I'm joining you from One Future Collective. We are a feminist social purpose organization with the vision of a world built on social justice led by communities of care. We fight for the right of each person to live a life of safety, dignity, and belongingness um, by catalyzing people power and by building just institutions. You can learn a little bit more about our work and where we sort of uh, how the impact that we make is made by visiting our website on www.onefuturecollective.org. Um, that's a little bit about the organization. If we can move on to the next slide, please. So um, that's me. Um, I am, my name is Karishma Shafi. I'm a senior program officer, sorry, a senior program manager here at One Future Collective, and I will be facilitating this session for you today. Um, you can refer to me using any pronouns you like, but I would prefer she, her pronouns. Um, and my work at One Future Collective is essentially just in the just in the just institutions vertical. I combine research practices, um, feminist research practices, with communication strategy towards um, advocating with and working with um, institutions towards ensuring that um, social justice is at the core of what we do, um, and that work is in alignment with what we're discussing here today. If we can go on to the next slide, please. 
Superb. Um, so a little bit about the community norms today. I know we don't have a lot of a crowd, but I still just want to share them. Um, make sure that we have these uh, these ideas in place about how the the set is going to be structured and what the things we're going to be talking about are. Um, please note that we practice active listening. That is, we listen not to respond, but to understand. Um, we also use the move up, move back principle, which means if you hear your voice a little bit too much, um, uh, during discussions or in chat, please make sure that you move back a little bit um, to to let other people share and to make sure that the discussion is um, fair and inclusive. And if you hear your voice a little bit less, um, make sure to move up or share as you can. Please also be respectful and empathetic in your communication and allow yourself uh, the 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 idea that this space can be slightly uncomfortable because some of the things that we talk about do not come easy easily to us because um, of the ways in which we understand power and the ways in which we occupy the world, which means some of this reflection or some of this work can cause some discomfort. But please do note that discomfort does not equal a lack of safety. Um, and discomfort is not the same as being unsafe. And so we try we try our best to make these spaces and all other spaces that One Future Collective occupies both brave and safe. Um, with that in mind, perhaps I can take you through a little bit of the of the structure of the session. If we can go on to the next slide, please. Yeah. So um, in terms of an outline, I just quickly wanted to share it. Um, we will be taking about 10 minutes today just going over the importance of DEI in leadership and governance, as well as another 10 minutes to envision um, DEI-driven governance or to make sure that we are able to um, see that DEI has a role and a place in leadership and governance and what that role looks like. And then finally, we will be sharing um, a tool that we have created at One Future, Create, uh, One Future Collective that has to do with the building of um, Nonprofit boards that are inclusive, nonprofit boards that center DEI in all of their work and that center social inclusion in all of their work. Finally, we'll be having some space for reflections. Um, this space is just for us to um, talk to each other, to share what we've learned in the session, to see if there are ideas that we'd like to share, um, if there are spaces where we find that we still have questions, etc. This is a space where we can have those questions, have those discussions. And then finally, we'll take about five minutes um, to quickly close at the end of the session. Yeah, um, that's a bit about the session. If we can go on to the next slide, please. Superb. Um, so I wanted to take a bit today to just quickly define DEI. I know that the sessions today are all structured around DEI because the theme of the day is such. Um, but I did not also want us to be really stuck in the definitions of DEI that exist, um, you know, overall or team wide and just sort of explore what we understand about DEI or what our understanding is of um, how it functions, what it is, what it means. Um, if we can go on to the next slide, I have a quick analogy um, for us to perhaps discuss what um, DEI is and what it can look like at an organizational level. Um, I know that, ex that definitions exist of DEI and I will be referring to a few of them myself, but an analogy that I wanted to use was that of a party. Right. So let's say that we attend a party um, and it's it's been organized. You attend the party, you come back home after the party and you think about, you know, what was my experience like? Did I enjoy myself? Um, and so if you put a DEI frame into that analogy, that is, uh, let's say, for example, um, let's think about the fact of oh, who was invited to the party. Right. So diversity refers to being invited to the party. Diversity essentially um, refers to the uh, to the mix of people that are present in in a room that are present in an organization across various levels, um, across caste, across religion, across um, race, etc. And so these are all parameters of diversity. Diversity will essentially then refer to being invited to the party or being a part of the collective. Um, equity, on the other hand, refers to um, this systematic availability of 
resources or access to resources that is provided to people based on their um, unique needs and circumstances. Um, remember that equity is different from equality because whereas equality refers to everyone being given the same resources, equity sort of shifts that focus um, in a more anti-oppressive, power-critical and um, power-based approach where it where it understands that different people have different needs and so will require different forms of support. Um, within the party analogy, equity could look like, you know, I tell the host, for example, that I can't make it to the party and the host books me a cab. So it's the host identifying that I have a need that um, I cannot fulfill by myself. And so it's the host going out of their way, um, not, not even in fact out of their way. It's the host ensuring that they are understanding what my needs are and meeting those needs to make sure that I'm at the party and to make sure that, um, you know, I'm I, I'm in a place where I'm able to participate in the party. Um, and finally, when we go on to inclusion, it refers to the idea that people are made part of uh, whatever discussions are happening, whatever conversations are happening at the conversation, at the um, organization, at the level of the party that we are referring to. Inclusion would be um, that you're made part of the conversations at dinner, that you're asked about what food do you want to eat, that you're asked, you know, who do you know at the party? How can we uh, stay in touch after the party? So inclusion at the level of a party would just be being able to be a part of the larger crowd, being able to enjoy yourself to the full extent. Um, I will encourage folks um, to share any ideas that they have, any thoughts that they have about defining DEI in general and sort of um, the understanding of the concepts of DEI, any allied concepts that you can think of, such as power, intersectionality, privilege, anything of that sort, any ideas that you have or anything that you'd like to add on um, to the definition that we've just spoken about or any questions that you have for me, please feel free to put them in chat. I will wait for about 10 seconds for any questions that come in or any thoughts, ideas that you have. Right. I'm glad that the definitions have gone over well or um, that they've resonated, I hope. Um, but the one thing that I want to push us towards or the one thing that I want us to push to think is if it's enough for us to think about diversity at a level where it's just, you know, what happens day-to-day um, -day in the organization or what happens day-to-day -day at at an employer HR level, right? Because a lot of us tend to think of DEI as simply an HR function or simply another thing that the HR team needs to do to make sure that, you know, we're relevant or that we're part of the discussion that's currently happening on social on social justice. But um, we posit at One Future Collective, and I think uh, the summit resonates as well, is that um, DEI or the commitment to including a diverse range of people and to making sure that our workspaces are equitable and inclusive of a diverse range of voices, it's important for us um, to ensure and to ask ourselves if um, we are able to make DEI policy, DEI practice, DEI systems that for me beyond just the bottom level or beyond just the HR function of including people and asking them a bunch of questions or, you know, having them answer a survey or etc. And so how much of a part of our daily um, interactions or daily practices at work and our overall systems is DEI, right, is the question. Um, if we can go on to the next slide, perhaps, please, yes. Superb. Um, I wanted to open the floor up to all of you to share if you if you have any thoughts on the current practice of DEI or the way that it's currently understood, um, and if you have thoughts about you know how we might be able to change that, or if you have thoughts about you know I think that it works, any thoughts of that kind, I will leave the floor open for about ten seconds.
um i do still want to encourage um if you have any thoughts reflections etc please feel free to put them in chat um and we can revisit them throughout the session yeah um if we can go on to the next slide please yes yeah? super um so a couple of things um that perhaps we can think about when we think about embedding like i said right dei within leadership and governance aspects within um the nonprofit sector within our organizations as nonprofits um the first, the very first aspect of it is a strategic commitment to dei now the reason why i refer to strategy in particular is because a strategic commitment or a strategic um action keeps in mind that it's cohesive work that goes towards the goals of the organization right so a strategic commitment to dei would make sure or would um push us towards building dei into our um day to day operations as well as to our larger um vision mission goals and goals and and um, outcomes that we're looking for so the very first thing that um that is needed in order for um dei to be built into leadership and governance and other um, aspects of an organization is a strategic commitment secondly we need really robust policy um to make sure that there is infrastructure or there is um, backing to the commitment that we've made or um, that we're able to communicate this commitment and have um, measures um for it right measures that allow us to do this work actionably and tangibly um across time and across um areas of work a couple of processes that such a policy would touch upon would be recruitment appraisal retention progress monitoring etc um it would also set in place a couple of checks for the organization and for board members in particular right and selection committees um, to hold them accountable to the dei mission that can be organization wide or specific to a particular project it's important for such a policy to be um first implemented and second communicated really strongly both internally and externally um up next um it is important for us to think about not just having policy but also within that policy making sure that assessments are a part of our work right are we assessing where we are and where we need to go is it um happening in a way that allows us to learn what our needs are and then meet them accordingly and then speaking of meeting needs are we able to build competencies within the board and within the organization to actually undertake the task of implementing dei day to day and organization wide mission wide right up next it's important for us to have really strong supporting infrastructure that enables dei in action what this means is are we ensuring that hiring policies um are not built in a way that make it difficult for us to hire candidates from diverse backgrounds are our day to day practices not conducive to inclusion at the workplace are we not um prioritizing equity in our day to day work so it's important not only to have policy or to have a written commitment but to be able to action that what is the infrastructure that is needed right um up next it's important to always recognize and reward Uh, the work of dei because it's important to build it into our um our structures of incentive and our structures of responsibility because unless it's a part of the consequences that come from our work it it will not hold effect and it it will not hold water in our um day to day workings right so it's important to recognize and reward any cultural shifts that we make towards dei or any actionable shifts that we make in terms of dei it's also important to allocate resources towards monitoring evaluating um and learning about dei and holding ourselves accountable to dei right it's not just enough for us to have structures in place that ask us to do dei but also important for us to be able to use those structures and to be able to um provide for the work that's happening right to be able to make it a part of everything else that's happening at at work um and then finally it's really important for us to clearly communicate any strategic commitments that we have towards dei what this does is um 
it is a variant of what you signaling where we essentially are telling the world look we are a place that is safe we are a place that prioritizes um equity that prioritizes inclusion and that prioritizes safety for the safety and well-being for um the people that we work with so these are just a couple of ways in which leadership and governance can embed dei in organizations and in their own work um towards this if we go on to next slide please i wanted us to perhaps engage in a small activity or a small reflection if you'd like to do it that way on building dei driven boards right or how do we ensure that the dei is not just a tech is not just a checklist item for us it's not just something that we do for the sake of doing because it's part of policy um towards this there were a couple of reflections that i have for us i will um encourage yash perhaps if you can go on to the next slide and we can see them on screen yeah so the idea with this work was for us to do um together a reflective activity that um helps us build for example our terms of reference to build our own board um and as we build our terms of reference a couple of questions for us to think about are how do we want to organize um the board that we have that we are recruiting for right are there hierarchies within the board is it that some members of the board have more say over things than others and what is the justification of that hierarchy what purpose does it serve right um we also have questions about who should apply to this position right what is the what are the competencies that we prioritize or what are the competencies that we look for um when we ask for someone to join the board is it in terms of identity is it in terms of experience are we um are we prioritizing um you know lived experience of identity are we ex are we prioritizing just the idea that you know just because someone belongs to a particular identity they are part of this board or are there experiential aspects to it as well um that we are prioritizing up next is the question of you know what skills are we prioritizing it's not just an experience aspect but also what can you do for the board right um and this is here where a specific focus on dei on the diversity aspect of having a range of skills um be represented within the board um is important right what skills is it that we are asking for board members to have um up next is a question on what are some pathways that we might use to fill up this position for example who would i advertise this to am i using an external agency am i using say for example um am i using individuals uh that are associated with the organization to hire internally am i hiring externally am i um involving another agency in this work what are the pathways that i'm using to fill up the position um up next what are some practices of the board that i am advertising as being desirable right what are the ways in which i'm saying look my board is desirable for you to be on or it's important for you to be on and so you should um, apply to this position or you should be, become a part of this recruitment process what is it about your board that would be desirable to a diverse range of audiences and then finally what is the weightage that you're giving to all of these different elements are you prioritizing skills more than you are prioritizing experiential identities are you prioritizing um organization or are you prioritizing hierarchies more than you are prioritizing practices etc so just those um are some questions i would like for us to perhaps collectively reflect on and share any thoughts ideas that we have um on if you know what you would do in answering these questions if you were to build your own terms of reference to build um a non-profit board for your non-profit organization i will um give us about 2 minutes to share any reflections thoughts ideas in chat um and allow for any questions as well if you have any feedback uh, so far about what you what more you like discuss please um do feel free to share that as well
All right. Um, I think just in the interest of time, it might be helpful um, for us to keep inviting reflections, make sure that, you know, there is space for this. So I'm um, just wanting to share that you can still add reflections if you have them throughout um, the rest of this presentation, the rest of this workshop as well, and um, engage as you can. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the next slide, please, Yash. And perhaps I can introduce the most interesting part of um, this workshop, what we are here for, which is um, a best practices um, document that we have developed at One Future Collective. This is a document and a tool that um, encapsulates some best practices, some of which we've already discussed um, and some of which we are going to on um, DEI for nonprofit boards specifically. Um, now a little bit of a background on how we've reached the, this tool and why it's been built. Um, part of the organization, so for example, our CEO and uh, our CEO and founder um, Vanita Murarka has been part of several boards, um, and they found that there is a need, um, like we discussed right earlier, or uh, to ensure that DEI is not just a performative HR function, it's not just another checklist item for organizations, but something that is made an active part of day-to-day -day functioning of overall strategic commitments of just the um, vision and mission of the organization, right? What is it that drives us to do this work? And so are we able to, as an organization, by making it a part of um, the very top or the very center of the organization, are we able to drive action towards it in a way that... Um, that that truly affects change or that truly allows for long term change to happen. Um, and so just to answer some of these questions, we've built this tool and um, the, the, the idea of the tool itself is just that we are able to offer based on extensive research, a set of um, guidelines or a set of ways to practice um, DEI within nonprofit boards. And remember that none of these items are prescriptive. These are broad recommendations that we've made, which can be customized and contextualized based on your own nonprofit's needs, based on your own nonprofit context. Um, who are your audiences? Who are you working with? What is the social, political, cultural context that you're working in? All of those are customizable moving parts um, that you can account for within the framework of best practices that we've provided. Other than these best practices, something else that we touch on um, in this tool is the skills that a, a nonprofit board needs in order to be DEI driven or in order to center DEI in their practice. Um, I can touch upon some of these skills um, and the rest I will keep in a street for you to find in the tool itself. Some of these um, skills are active listening, right, which inquires individuals to listen attentively, to understand and to reflect on conversations, to respond appropriately and retain information. Um, for the in the DEI context, it allows us to productively engage with voices and understand their needs. Right, um, as a board, when we engage with leadership or when we engage with um, the people that we manage, are we truly listening to them? Are we truly um, understanding where they are coming from in expressing their needs or in identifying the problems that they have at the workplace. Um, and so active listening is then a crucial skill that any board needs to have. Up next is the openness to learn. Um, and within the DEI context, this, impo this is important because it allows us to instill a curiosity and a drive for justice, right, which allows boards to initiate and sustain learning about um, diverse experiences and uh, just fosters learning in general about how do we incorporate um, equity in our practice, how do we be more inclusive in the way that we engage with people um, or, or in the way that we conduct our operations on a day-to-day -day basis. Some other skills that are really crucial are perspective buildings, systems thinking, monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning or meal and finally collaborative design. Um, I personally find collaborative design is a really crucial skill uh, because it allows us to plan um, strategically and it allows us to design in a way where um, the where 
the practice of asking for opinions or the practice for asking for um, input from the team is not just performative. It's not just something you do because it says so in the policy. It's something that comes from a deep sense of curiosity and a deep sense of empathy for the rest of the team, right? And so collaborative designing is um, truly a really essential part of non-profit work or non-profit board work for um, instilling and embedding the EI into everyday practices. The tool itself um, will give you the details of some of these skills and a few more um, that, that your board will need. It will also offer you a, a, a tool with which to assess your own skills and to make sure that you um, are able to identify areas of growth for your own board and for your own self. Um, alongside this, the, the tool itself will also provide you a list of resources or readings that are external to one, to one Future Collective's work that you can read, that you can engage with to better understand your own nonprofit board's needs, its composition, its um, functioning, not just day to day, but also overall um, and more higher level. Um, and so some of these resources have been compiled in an external reading list that you will also find in um, the resource. I would request, um, Yash, if you can go on to the next slide and um, share a link to the tool as well. Hi, can we go on to the next slide, please, Yash? Super. Um, there's a QR code on your screens that you can scan to access the tool for yourself. Um, if you cannot um, scan it at the moment or if you're unable to do so, I will also put um, a link to this tool in chat. This link is open access, meaning anyone can um, see it go through it, download it, use it in their own contexts. And the reason why um, we've offered this tool as open access or offered this tool in a way um, that allows people um, to go through it at their own pace and at their own time is to make sure that, you know, this learning is accessible to people and that it, this learning allows us to take our time to understand why we do this work, um, right? There are a couple of... Um, options for you to or, or a couple of things for you to explore within the tool so i will give us about a minute to perhaps scan um, go through the tool see if you want to save it for later or go through some parts of it right now if you have questions for me if you have ideas um, for the tool please feel free to share them um, as well something that i wanted to share as you're going through the tool is that this is the very first iteration of this tool right this is the very first time that we've done this work um, and so we would really appreciate feedback or we'd really appreciate any thoughts that you have on the tool itself, how we can make it better, um, if there are ways that you find um, we can improve it or if there are parts of the tool that are missing for you or um, if you'd like to add something to it, please feel free um, to share some of these ideas with me in chat. Have, again, just a quick um, note to thank everyone. Um, who's in the room with us today um, all of you for part thank you so much all of you for participating for um, helping us sort of see the tool through to fruition um, in terms of offering your feedback etc I am still um, open to um, receiving feedback on the tool itself and on the session that you um, have been a part of today um, I will leave um, in chat as well, a couple of options for um, participants to reach us, um, to um, reach One Future Collective for uh, about the tool and for any other needs that you may have as an organization or as an individual. Um, like I said, we do work um, with um, people to build people power, to catalyze people power. We do this through a lot of different kind of um knowledge building, advocacy efforts, community organizing, etc., cetera, um, as well as through work with just institutions or um, organizations, companies towards um, towards agenda items like DEI, gender, gender equity and social inclusion and uh, monitoring evaluation, etc. 
Um, and so if you have any um, thoughts, ideas that you'd like to share with us, or if you have any needs that you think we can help you with, um, if we can go on to the next slide, please. Yes, you'll see our contact information on screen for you as well. Um, if we can go on to the ne next slide, please. Yes, yeah, super. Um, so you can see our um, contact information on screen for you. Um, these are all places where we are active and where you can reach out to us um, and share if you have any needs like, um the, like training or um, capacity building leadership development within your organizations um towards dei towards jesse which is gender equity and social inclusion or towards um any other forms of social justice work that you'd like to do internally as well um we are open to hearing your suggestions your ideas and we are open to working with you if you have projects that you think um are uh, would be a good fit for us organizationally please feel free to share them with us um, or if you'd like to collaborate um, on a partnership um, please feel free to also reach out to us um, I can repeat our email address as well which is um, info at onefuturecollective.org um, you can also reach out to me directly my email address I will leave in chat for everyone One second. Um, I am quickly going to read um, Kuldeep's question that they've shared in chat. They shared about fundraising challenges for boards um, and how do we face them? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think fundraising is a question that uh, or, or, the, the, or the challenge of fundraising for boards specifically, right? Um, because it's a responsibility that um, boards must share internally. I think it's important for us to distinguish between um the different streams that we have of uh the, the different ways that that we can fundraise so for example is our strategy as a board different for um institutional fundraising as it is for retail fundraising are we understanding the challenges of um the sources uh that we're asking to fund asking for funds right what are the contexts within which we are doing fundraising um are there ways to reach out to the people that we are working with um are there things that our peers are doing that we perhaps aren't doing so i think a key aspect of um better understanding um you know fundraising and better doing fundraising as a board is uh, like i said before as well right this emphasis on monitoring not just our own work but also um, understanding what is happening with our peers right what does the landscape of um, fundraising look like what are current challenges trends um, what are possibilities that are presented in the sector as it is um, what are some risks that are uh, 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 that 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 are posed to us as non-profits non-profit boards so i think a lot of a lot more intensive work in terms of understanding the landscape is one um, way for us to perhaps address the challenge of um, funding as an issue as you know given the context that human rights um, education and human rights work in general funding is shrinking in the sector and so how do we make sure that um, it is work that that stays afloat and it is work that thrives um, it, just in terms of that wanted to share that um, strategy work particularly communications fundraising organizational strategy in general um, is work that we and we at one future um, specialize in so, and so if you are joining in a bit later or if you're watching this um, ahead of the session itself um, i did want to share that those are areas of work that we can offer support in that we can help with um, and so yeah i think that's about it from me folks um, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you so much for engaging um, in the different ways that you have um, i really enjoyed the session i hope everyone who attended did as well